Hi, I'm Dan from Allied Gaming, and today we're going to show you how to replace your power supply. To complete this task, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and some cable cutters. If you don't have cable cutters, you should be able to substitute them with something like nail clippers. First thing you want to do is get a nice flat surface to work on. Put down something soft so you don't scratch your case. In order to do this job, we're going to need access to both sides of the computer, through the glass panel and through the side panel. First of all, we'll lay the computer on its side. Remove the four screws that hold your glass on. Put your glass somewhere safe where it's not likely to fall or break. From here, we want to lie the computer on its side and remove the back panel. In order to remove this panel, there are two screws on the back. Remove them, remove the panel. Then from here, you want to determine whether or not you've got standard cables or cable extensions. Cable extensions are white and look like this and have these combs on them. If you don't have cable extensions, skip forward to the next section. With cable extensions, on the back you'll notice a clip here where the white cables connect to the black cables. The black cables are for your power supply. You have the 24 pin for the motherboard and in this case two 8 pins for the graphics and up here one 8 pin for the CPU. In order to release these, each cable will have a clip on it. Press down on the clip, grab the sides of the white extension cable and wiggle it until it releases. This is where your cable cutters are going to come in handy. You want to remove any cable ties that are holding parts of the power supply's cables in. You do the same for all cables. Once you've got your glass panel removed, you want to remove your 8 pins from your graphics card. Do this by pressing down on the clip on the side of the power cable. Push them to the side. Now you want to go and release the motherboard. There's a clip on the side of the motherboard just like on the graphics card. Push it in and wiggle the 24 pin side to side and it'll slowly release. And then you want to do the CPU. This one's tricky to get your hands in. It might be easier to go in from the underside. Once they're all released, you want to stand the computer upright. From here, you want to slide your cables back through and out the back of the computer. Being careful when you remove the graphics card one, not to remove any other cables connected to the motherboard while you do it. You may need to remove some cable ties that are holding your cables in. This is where if you had problems removing your 8-pin CPU, if you come in from this side, you press down on the lug, and then pull on the cable from the other side, you'll be able to release it. Once released, pull it through. You want to carefully remove cables looking for the SATA cable that will be connected to your hub. Remove the SATA cable like so. If you have a hard drive, there will be a SATA cable connected to the back of your hard drive. Simply pull it out of the back of the drive. Thread all your cables out from the computer and hang them over the side. Now you want to grab your Phillips head screwdriver and on the back of the case there are four screws holding the power supply in. You can remove all screws. Once all the screws are removed you should be able to slide the power supply up and out. Once you get your new power supply you want to repeat the process in reverse. Slide the power supply back into place. Push it up towards the back of the case. And then you want to reinsert the four screws. It's easy, if you can, to hold the power supply in place with your free hand and screw it in with your other hand. Once all your screws are back in, you want to start reconnecting the cables. I'd recommend starting with reconnecting your SATA and any SATA proof rules. Once you have your SATA connected, Tuck the cables back in behind the power supply so they're out of the way. When reconnecting your graphics card, you want to check on your power supply for a cable that says PCIe. If your cable doesn't say anything, a PCIe can normally be identified by being a 6 plus a 2 connection. Whereas a CPU is normally an 8 or it'll split into two 4s. Let's run the power supply CPU cable back and reconnect. 
The extra SATA cable is not needed in this system, so we're just going to tuck it in behind the power supply. We'll connect the graphics card back up. You should hear an audible click when these are connected properly. And lucky last, the 24 pin for the motherboard. When we're all done, tuck the cables back away. From here, we're gonna slide the 24 pin back through the hole it came out of, and gently slide the two GPU eight pins back through the bottom of the case. And now the CPU eight pin. And that goes up through the top. Now we want to turn the computer back over onto its side and start reconnecting things. We'll start with the graphics card. When reconnecting the graphics card, you'll hear an audible click as it reconnects cor correctly. The graphics card can only be connected one way. Now the motherboard 24 pin, you want to pull it through, line it up, and it can also only reconnect one way. Push it in and slowly push on each side until you hear a click. Now the fun one, the CPU 8 pin. The easiest way to do this, I find, would be to leave the computer on its back, thread the cable through, and then gently try and line the cable up with your hands. This one can be tricky and fiddly. With a CPU, again, press on it, it can only go in one way, and you press on it, you feel it. You hear an audible click when it connects. When reinserting the CPU cable, be careful of the CPU cooler. If you have an air cooler, not only is it sharp, but you don't want to put pressure on it as well. If there are any cables that you don't need, just tuck them in behind the power supply. If you have spare cable ties, now you can try and cable tie things down, or if not, you can leave them and just tuck them away. Now, we want to refit our panel. And now we want to refit the glass. Put your four screws back on. Now your PC should be ready to go. If you're still having problems, please reach out to one of our friendly, helpful customer service staff.